Earlier, I recorded a conversation with Ed Burns. You know him because of a number of starring roles, including Saving Private Ryan, along with Tom Hanks. His new movie is called Sidewalks of New York, and here is a clip. I'm pleased to have Edward Burns back at this table. Welcome back. Thanks. Thanks. Tell me about <laughs> Sidewalks of New York. Um, Sidewalks was a film that I wrote while I was making Saving Private Ryan, actually, and it's a, um, it's a... I wrote while I was making Saving Private yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, uh, the thing that I wasn't used to, because uh, that's the first time I had acted for anybody else, so um, being on someone else's set, uh, you have nothing but downtime. You know, is, you've got hours and hours. This was obviously pre-Christie, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. Uh, so there was just a lot of downtime, you know, hanging out in your camper, and I thought, why not make use of it? And I, and I wrote this screenplay. Um, hanging out in your camper? Yeah. You know, it's a tough life. <laughs> <laughs> you have TV in the camper. And oh, they give you everything. Yeah, everything no, you it's need. Real nice, real yeah, especially nice, especially you know. Spielberg is probably a big production. So it is, but on his films, you know, th that was one of those jobs where you know you were lucky to have the gig, so there weren't really a lot of the perks. Oh, I see. You know? In other words, you're lucky to be there than there. Yeah, like yeah. It was you. more like you're paying him in order to be yeah, part of that. Film. And, and a pretty good experience. Yeah. Oh, great. Life changing. Yeah. Really. Well, I'll I, come yeah. back to sidewalks in a okay. Life changing. Um. Well, for for two reasons. I mean. Um, you know, professionally, uh, when you work with someone like Spielberg and like a Tom Hanks, uh, you know, you look at you look at the careers they have, and then the kind of men that they are, and you know who they are with, uh, you know, their families, and the fact that they seem to, you know, manage both, um, and all the philanthropic work that they do, uh, and they're both great guys at sort of taking young actors and. Uh, you know, not only do they work with you, but they become friendly with you and they kind of serve as mentors for the whole lot of us. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, just getting to know Steven, uh, he, you know, just he talked to me about my career and, you know, sort of um, reminded me how important, because after my third film, I kind of, I think I lost my way a little bit and uh, I had worked with a studio and uh, surrendered some control because. Um, they suggest that you collaborate, and in that means you sort of give some things up. Mm -hmm. And just kind of reminded me how important it was to sort of stick to my guns and stay yeah. true to what, what it is that I want to do. And, and that's what you learned. I mean, he reinforced what your instincts were. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And also, I mean, even just being on the set of that film, uh, you know, we shot all handheld and available light. Right. And Private Ryan was scheduled uh, to it was shoot. all available light? For the most part, yeah. yeah. You mean all the outdoor stuff? Yeah, and there's only, there only one interior scene. Oh. Um, and you know we were scheduled to shoot 66 days and wrapped in 58, which a film of that size is unheard of. Uh, and you I'm must sitting spend there. Spent a lot of time getting ready. Yeah, this is that was I think only the second film other than Schindler's that he did not storyboard. So he just kind of showed up and you know was doing his thing yeah. um, without the storyboards. And the amazing thing is watching him, he would have five monitors set up, and you know all five cameras are going at once. He'd call action, he'd watch the take, he'd call cut, and then he'd look at the five monitors and then he'd say, okay, in camera number one, uh, we had an extra about 20 yards in the background, missed his mark. Uh, the squibs in camera number two didn't go off in the background. I mean, the guy was clearly made to make movies because he can see so much within a frame. But, you know, I mean, he's seeing that much within five frames. Jesus. Um, but one day we're in, a, in the foxhole shooting a scene and it's a scene that probably should take a full day to shoot. Mm -hmm. And he got done with it in about two hours. And I sat there and I said, you know, I make these lower budgeted films. If <laughs> I could adopt yeah, right. these filmmaking, you know, the handheld and available yeah. light filmmaking method to my stuff, I'll cut my schedules in half and therein, you know, uh, my budgets will be so much lower. And that's a way, you know, the most important thing for, I think, any filmmaker is to maintain as much creative control as you can. And when you can make a film in 17 days for under a million dollars, uh, you don't need the studio. So Sidewalk's benefited from you being on oh, Private Ryan. Oh, and you Not know, only the writing of it there, but also watching and figuring out a way to do it cheaper. Yeah. So. All right. Roll tape. While we're speaking of Private Ryan, here's a scene from that film. Tell me about Sidewalks. What kind of what is this movie? Uh, Sidewalks is um, it's what I, can, I like to call a relationship comedy because I've made some romantic comedies in the past, and what I tried to do with this was um, I didn't want this film has no romance in it. It really examines relationships. And as much as it's set in New York, I think it's pretty universal. It, but it does take a look at six very different New Yorkers from six uh, different socioeconomic backgrounds who are all linked through some sort of um, sexual liaison. Mm -hmm. um, and it just kind of examines, you know, um, uh, sort of all the screwed up things that can happen between men and women. And then also looks at, you know, 
how we meet and um, how tough it is for us to sort of stick together. Roll tape. Here's a clip. <laughs> What's happening? Um, that is uh, the Rosario Dawson character uh, had been married to Krumholtz, uh, right. David Krumholtz's right. character, right. and right. Uh, had uh, was sort of one of those um, high school romances. Got married right out of that and uh, got divorced uh, in their early 20s, and I'm sort of the new guy on the scene. And this is uh, sort of the first time uh, Krumholtz's character, my character, meet. And then Dennis um, plays? Uh, Dennis Farina plays um, sort of my character's mentor. Yeah, I work right. at a right. television yeah. show like Entertainment Tonight, and he plays sort of the John Tesh on-air personality who, um, uh, you know, my character's looking to get married and have kids, and he's a guy that's... Uh, uh, is holding on mm -hmm. to the single life. And, and basically says, I'll take care of you when, you, when you're all down in the dump. Uh, yeah, I get dumped and lose my yeah, apartment. Right. He takes me under his yeah. wing. Roll tape. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> that character's out of yeah, his mind. I know, exactly. Yeah. I was going to say. She probably had the right idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of directing there? Uh, not really. Yeah. Um, this is the first cast that I've had, and not to knock the other cast, but where I really didn't have to do any directing at all. I mean, I, I was able to find people that... Uh, either were close to their characters or sort of knew the characters so well, I just showed up and occasionally would say, and maybe a little faster or a little slower. And again, I think, you know, to bring up Spielberg again, I think that's something that I may have gotten from him because it wasn't really a lot of directing going on in that film. And I think he cast us because we were close to the types that he was looking for. Um, and for me, you know, I, I come at um, filmmaking as a writer first and um, uh, have had to learn how to tell my stories uh, more visually. Uh, and I think with this film, the fact that I didn't really have to worry about the performances so much freed me up to kind of play with yeah. the camera in a way I hadn't before. What is it you want to do most? Everything? Not really. You know, I mean, I love, you know, I, I was a writer first, and I love writing more than anything. Um, you know, and the directing has sort of become an extension of that in a way to maintain control over what I've written. And after my, the, my third film, it got terrible reviews, it bombed at the box office, and then I got Private Ryan um, yeah. following that. And I sort of took a year off from filmmaking and pursued the acting thing and did 15 minutes. And when I finished 15 minutes, and I, I was like, I don't know when I'll get back behind the camera, but about halfway through 15 minutes, I started to miss what I do. Yeah. Uh, and since then, I've directed two movies, this and another movie called Ash Wednesday that I also wrote. And um, you know, I've told people, uh, if I had to choose between No Looking Back and Private Ryan, which were both shot in the same year, uh, hands down, I would take No Looking Back. And, you know, Private Ryan made $400 million, got nominated for all those awards, uh, and I'm so thankful to have been a part of that film. But you can't compare what it's like to just, you know, to be a guy working on that film as opposed to when it's your voice, your baby, your vision, and, you know, every ounce of you is in that film. Uh, it's a different kind of experience and a different kind of passion. So you're so. going to direct? I'm going to direct, And, and yeah. put yourself in the movies? Yeah, yeah. Is it, the city of New York is as good to you as you would ever want them to be in terms of making movies? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, I the, mean, the city is They'll great. do anything for you. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, on this film, like on McMullen, uh, a lot of times we didn't have permits. And I think it's because we had such a <laughs> tiny worry. crew, yes. I was able to, you know, uh, you know, if we had a Sneak permit in. to shoot on one location and it wasn't really working out, whether it was noise or something, we'll just, you know, run around the block where we didn't have a permit and reshoot the scene and kind of get away mm -hmm. with it. So Good luck with this. Thanks a lot. Great to see you. Appreciate it.